Okay, team, it is Friday Coffee with Jane and Bobby. Hello, Bobby, back in the States this week. Hello, Jane. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Good, good. Miss good, you. Good. Oh, miss you too. Um, this week, we're talking about The X Factor. Some of you may have heard it's a popular show on TV, both in the States and the UK. Um, I have a theory on this, um, and, and we've seen it from, if you take the Les Mills model, um, designed really to get rid of Group X instructors and make um, the club chains more profitable by using their um, employed staff or their date their their date their bank of staff to teach the group classes. I think what no one what no one saw coming in the first days was that Group X instructors have the X factor. It's what makes them ultra appealing to the people that come to their classes. It's what makes clients adhere to the Group X format. It is the instructor. The instructor leads in a way that we, we've not really learned to package um, and put a label on it and sell it, actually. Do, does that make sense to you? Makes sense to me. <laughs> it makes sense to all of you. Let's see. You always make sense to me, Jane. Just assume that. Yeah. So that is the question is, if you got 10 people up in front of the room and they had the same music, the same choreography, the same number of years of experience, anybody who's been in the industry for three picoseconds would understand they're not going to have the same effect. Usually there's a few and then there's one who just has this dynamism, this infectious magnetism that fills his or her class more than anybody else. And what is that indescribable it? Because we see that with presenters all over the fitness industry. And I'm reading a book right now. I keep tapping into it. The first hundred pages are a bit slow <laughs> because it talks about writing different types of screenplays. But after you get past that, it's brilliant. And it's by Robert McKee. And the name of the book is Story. And Robert McGee says that in your quest, consider these three words, and he's talking about storytelling. They are author, authority, and authenticity. Now, let me talk about what those are. When somebody has the X factor, they possess all three of these key words. They are the author of their own material. They're their own person. They are not trying to be somebody else. They have a, when you own st your own stuff, you come from a position of empathy that's magnetic. On PT on the Net, for three years, I did the audio clinics, and I got an opportunity, Jane, to speak to some of the most, in my opinion, interesting, dynamic, and brilliant minds, both inside and outside the fitness industry. And one of my best interviews I have ever done was with Paul Check. And the title of the presentation was living your living philosophy i got to about 15 minutes into this i had to stop paul and say paul what are you talking about when you say living your living philosophy well what's the difference between you know, a living and a dead philosophy i was being a bit facetious and he said to me i'm paraphrasing now you know bobby when someone has a philosophy what they're doing is adhering to an understanding of principles intellectually but when someone has a living philosophy, they're the embodiment of that philosophy because they have lived it. And they're coming out on the other end of the journey and looking back in retrospect through experience. And they've had the trials and they've had the tribulations of having been there and back again. And because of that, they resonate with people for a sense of empathy, a sense of compassion that you just cannot have intellectually. And again, I'm paraphrasing, but that's powerful. And, and think about the Group X instructor who was overweight or the presenter who grew up as an overweight kid, got ridiculed, got abused, didn't get approval from their parents. Their parents would constantly tell them how fat they are and nothing they did was ever good enough. And then for whatever reason, whatever trigger, whatever inspired them, to overcome all that adversity, they're now up in front of this room. And they're more than a leader. They're more than an example. They are an empathetic connector. 
and their micro expressions, the subtle nuances of their vocal tonality, and every molecule of who they are communicates with, I understand you. I'm not better than you. I'm not the sage on the stage. I am the guide on the side to borrow from Roy Sugar. <laughs> I am someone who has been where you have been. Follow me. I know where you're going. Uh and someone who got your technique or your methodology because you watched a guru who inspired you and said, oh, my God, I'm just going to say what they say. I'm going to do what they do. I'm going to be just like that person. You can't be like that person because that person is already taken. And when you communicate, you don't have the same effect as that individual because you seem affected rather than effective. When I was doing the mentorships with PTA Global, with my partners, Scott Hobson, Rodney Korn, Ian O'Dwyer, and when we were lucky enough to have him because he was so busy, Michelle Dalcourt would pop in and just mesmerize us with his understanding of the human body that's second to none and a level of humility that's second to none. I always championed a mantra that the rest of the team came to embrace because I think it resonated with who we were and more importantly who we wanted to be. And that was be the leader you're looking for. We didn't want Love people that. to look at us like we're their leaders. What we wanted to do is inspire them that they could be the leader they are looking for by finding a reason that's bigger than their problems, by finding a reason that's bigger than their fears, by finding enough whys that are bigger than their why nots. See, we didn't want them to come in and be like Rod or Ian and Scott. And you can't be like Rod, Ian and Scott because Rod, Ian and Scott are authentically Rod, Ian and Scott. And so is Michelle. But what we encouraged our delegates to do was one better. Be the best version of yourself. So once you are the author, you have been there and you're sharing your experiences, the next is authority. One thing that everybody has in common is paying the price. When somebody owns their information, they have studied so hard, they have applied so many tens of thousands of hours that literally you can wake them up at 2 o'clock in the morning, slap them in the face and say go, and they can go through their choreography, they can connect or they can present, and it's like rewind and play. You cannot fake that. It's like somebody. It's like the joke about the presenter. And in the back of the room, he would always have his chauffeur. Because rather than, you know, waiting for him for hours and hours, the chauffeur would get bored in the car and one day ask them, hey, you know what, can I come into the room and sit in the back and just listen to you for a while? And the chauffeur loved these presentations so much that year after year, this guy's driver was in the back of the room listening to all the presentations. So one day, they're on the way to a presentation and the presenter gets really ill and he can't speak. So, so he turns true. around to his driver and says, you know what? listening to the same presentation year after year, day after day, you go do it, okay? Just, just, just get in front of the room. They won't know. I'll tell them to turn down the lights. We're about the same build, and you just go through it. And lo and behold, the driver gets up in front of the room, and he just goes through this presentation brilliantly. He gets a standing ovation until it comes time for questions and answers. And somebody in the audience raises their hand and says, you know, yeah, on this one point, I didn't really understand it, and my question's this. Well, the driver just gets so nervous because he doesn't know the information. He's just regurgitating everything he heard. And in a moment of cleverness, he turns around to the person and says, you know what, that question is so absolutely stupid. I'm going to let my driver in the back of the room have that. <laughs> and in the back of the room deliver the actual speech. But... That's the truth, isn't it? Because we'll all get caught out if we've not paid the price in advance. And the last thing is authenticity. And this is where I'm going to challenge you in a minute. What'd you say, Jane? And this will be where I challenge you in a minute. Okay, well, I look forward to that. <laughs> and authenticity is being like you, understanding your unique style, understanding what it is that makes you original. Now, another quote from Robert McKee is that originality lies in the struggle for authenticity, not eccentricity. A personal style, in other words, 
cannot be achieved self-consciously. Rather, when your authorial knowledge of setting and character meets your personality, the choices you make and the arrangements you create out of this massive material are unique to you. Your work becomes what you are, an original, and that is powerful. Right. See, two people are great to step out because they remember pains and insults in the past that imaginatively allows them to project future pains in the future, and therefore it robs them from being in the moment. When you're an original, you can create on demand. You have no need to worry about, oh my God, are they going to receive me? What are they thinking of me? Are they going to approve of me? You've got a message to communicate, and it's the magic that's in the message that allows you to be in the present. And when you start to go into the future because you're seeking approval, because you're not an original, you're copying someone else, well, at that point, you've left the room. Because where your people are, where the magic is, where you're needed is in the moment. It's not an hour after. It's not getting handshakes, back slaps, and accolades. It's right there. And anytime you are not an original, you're always going to try to project into the future to see how you're being received. And when that happens, you leave the room and you leave your circle of influence. So your challenge is, Jane... Well, my challenge is you're kind of giving a an in an industry standard definition of what the X Factor is, and I'm with you on every level. And I think the the author, the um, authority, and the authenticity. I couldn't put that better. They are the three things that are going to make you stand out from the crowd, and they're the people that I want to listen to. That's why I chat to you. What I do think, though, is that there's an X factor out there that can override all of these three things. And we see in the industry right now that people are falling for an X factor that is a charisma. It's a loud voice. It's, it's, it's um, a saleability and, a, and a, um, an attraction that is drawing people towards people who are the opposite. They're not the authors. They are not an authority on what they're talking about and they are not genuine or authentic, but they are followed and they are selling because they have the X factor, whatever that is. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, I think, you know, Jane, people think the X factor is something you either have or you don't. And the reason why people buy into that is because it's so hard to define. It's this it. There's just something about this person and we call that Charisma, but charisma is not the only thing that makes someone charismatic. And there is no way that we, and, and, but actually, let me take a step back. There is a way, but we would waste a lot of time chasing down and discrediting people who are simply carbon copies of someone else with a modicum of charisma. We can't worry about those people. The way to combat that is to ask ourselves, what is it that we're fighting for? What's our purpose? And what do we bring to the table that is unique, that is well-researched, that is authentic? And how do we get out in front of as many people as possible with an attitude not of entitlement, but rather servitude in order to get our point across? And if you take a look throughout history, Jane, some very good... I'm sorry, you, go ahead. No, but I was going to say, if you take a look through life, Bobby, if I put on a scale, if I meet three people and I put them in a row and I've got the psychopath, the sociopath and the genius, I bet the first two people I listen to are the psychopath and the sociopath because there's something about those two that are going to trap me and make me listen to them. I might see through them long term. But you just what I mean what I'm saying about an X factor. It is it is well documented that um, those two types of personality are engaging, exciting, and the people that perhaps in on the short term, when we're looking for someone to grab our interest and listen to, these type of people are the ones you listen to short term, and you might overlook the genius who has 
is the author of their own work is authoritative and authentic. I'm, I, I, what I'm saying is the X factor that we perceive is often the, the initial attraction. Well, let's take a look at the first two. All right? How do you recognize these individuals? How do you separate someone who truly is a genius and has something to contribute from someone who you're saying, and you know what? Psychopaths are easier or more easily found out because of the lack of impulse control. Or empathy. They're all, they're all probably a lot more sociopaths in society and in every industry and maybe up in front of the room than you might expect. And yeah. they're all very charismatic and they're all very charming, and they are very well composed, and they're very seductive. Here's the major point of differentiation. The genius is someone who is more interested in the process than the outcome. The yeah. genius is someone who is more interested in the message than being the messenger. You see, uh, yes, that's that's I'm not saying everyone who's charismatic is a sociopath. My God, <laughs> please don't understand. But anyone who does not have your best interest in mind, they are more interested in being the messenger yes. than they are interested in the value you are receiving from the message. They are extremely narcissistic in their personality types. How you tell the difference, like a tree, you can tell the difference between an orange tree and an apple tree because they bear very different fruit. Brilliant. If you are looking at a true leader, these are the people who have leaders popping up around them. These are people who very often start to step back as their followers now become leaders and step forward. You're not going to see that. Let's let's not use such strong labels as sociopath. But you're not going to see yeah. that with a narcissistic person who is just intent on saying, oh, right, that person up there, I want to be like them. I deserve that recognition. Yeah. I'm entitled to it. I'm going to be the guru. Gurus create followers. Leaders create other leaders. Yeah. And that is, that, that, that is the mantra of PTA Global is become the leader you are looking for. Love so I'll, I'll give you an example. And if I leave people out, I'm very sorry. In the beginning, PTA Global was me and Scott and Ian O'Dwyer and Rod and, you know, Michelle because, you know, with Viper and the Institute of Motion, he was exceedingly busy. And we had to do it simply because budget of a startup company, there was nobody else. But now if you look at PTA Global, you start to see co-founders less and less. And who do you see? You see Haley Hollanders. You see your Derek Prices. Um, you see it on the other side of the Atlantic, your Jean Sidonis. You see your Richard Ernie's of Espria. So you see truly dynamic people. You've got the Manhattans and you've got uh, Andrew Cox over in, in Asia. And all of these people who are equally dynamic and equally brilliant as any co-founder ever was start popping up all over the globe. And I know I've left out some really amazing people there, and I apologize just for time. But what you start to see is the second wave. And what you'll hopefully see in the next couple of years is the second wave steps back. They don't go away. They mentor, just like the first wave mentors the second, but you'll see them less and you'll see a new string of leaders coming up. And basically the organization tries to inspire and push those people forward. And we use the same method that someone who might be more about the messenger rather than the message would utilize, but you don't see people popping up. Everyone's encircling around the guru like flies or bees around the queen in a hive. And that's yeah. not what's going to transform the industry. But you're not going to get rid of those people. The best thing you could do is recognize those people. And if you're appalled that, hey, that person is not the author, they don't have authority, and they don't have authenticity, that information comes from somewhere or somebody else. And it's really using to lift up the presenter, not lift up the masses. Well, don't be like that. 
right. be a leader and utilize the Hegelian method for altruistic purposes. And let me wrap up with this. The Hegelian method has been used by really good people, people like Mahatma Gandhi, if you will, people like Albert Schweitzer. And it's been used by really malevolent people like Adolf Hitler. But basically, it's wrapped around three principles. Problem, reaction, solution. And in a problem, what you do is you state and come public with your unifying sense of purpose, something that resonates with people and something that is bigger than any one individual. And yeah. because it's bigger than they are, it draws people together and it's usually a common enemy. And as a common enemy, I'm not talking about a person like that person over there, yeah. Jane Nichols. She's up to no good. We're going to go get her. Of it's course, that's right, absurd. Right. Jane Nichols is never up to no good, but it's an ideal. I'll tell you, mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, what could be a unifying purpose as an example. The fact that, that restaurant chains invest millions of dollars, pounds, euros every single year trying to identify the right combinations of sugar and salt and fat that addict you to food while giving you heart disease to drive their profit margins up. That's an enemy I don't feel bad fighting against. That's an enemy that we can unify the masses around because that's an enemy that's trying to kill our children for their own personal gain. Am I being a little bit too strong in my yes, language? Yes, you're I'm ranting. Do it. <laughs> yes. Is reaction. Reaction is allowing people to emotively internalize that problem in a way that creates a bias for action, a righteous indignation. We need to do something about this. And then leaders create a solution, which yeah. is, okay, here are the three steps. Here's the unifying vision of the future we are trying to create. This is why each and every one of you that have abandoned your, your sense of individuality for a collective identity because the problem's significant enough to inspire you, to compel you, to enrage you enough to do that, here's what we're going to do about it, and here's going to be the result. So problem, reaction, solution. I think we should spend more time on this on a different day and, 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 and really look at that because it's too important to skim over, really. Do you think? Well, you know what? Let me put this back on the people who are listening to this. Ask questions of us. We work for you. Every week we come out and we talk about things based on our conversations in the industry. But I think, Jane, you might agree with this. What would be amazing for us is for you to watch this and say, hey, you know what? Here's a challenge I have. Here's something I disagree with. Or you know what? Here's something you touched upon that I have a question on or we want you to expound upon. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I'm That's with you totally. And tell us how can we better serve you and until next week we'll see you thank yeah. you so much for joining us take care my friends have a lovely week bye jane bye